Welcome back to Coding Goblin and welcome back to another video of my face. I've got a question for you. How many domains do you own? I've got another question for you. How many live websites do you own? Now take the number of domains you've got and divide it by the amount of websites you've got and this leaves you with a number and this number is what is known as your disgrace rating. Yes, this is something I just made up. But the higher the number, the more of an absolute disgrace you are. If your number is anything over two, you are an absolute disgrace. Under two, you're doing pretty well, to be fair, you're doing pretty well. Quickly pause the video, let me know what your disgrace rating is in the comments below, and we can all laugh at you, and you can probably laugh at me. Something else I'd be very interested to get your opinion on. When I was a young kid, I used to get very thirsty in the night sometimes. And, you know, because it was a lot of effort to go downstairs and get a glass of water, I used to actually just bite my tongue really hard like this, and what would happen is my mouth would fill with saliva and I would drink that saliva, which is pretty grim to be fair. Yeah, not related to coding at all, but I told someone this the other day and uh, yeah, they said that was really weird. So I'd be interested to get your opinion on that too. Maybe you can relate, maybe you've done that. Yeah, let me know in the comments below as well. Anyway, enough waffling. Why do we buy so many domains but have so few live websites? Well, I think I know the answer to this and it's actually really simple. Basically, we get really excited, we have so many ideas and we buy a web domain because it's fun, it's exciting. We think we're gonna make loads of money. But what happens is we quickly lose motivation because we do not take the action required to actually turn that idea that we had to go with that domain into an actual viable business. And it's a real problem. It is a real problem because what happens is we keep flitting between ideas and you know projects and we never actually get anything done. We don't have anything to show for all our domains other than a list of domains, which is stupid. I have had a lot of domains over the years. I'm not so bad now, I'm really not. I have whittled them down. I just stopped renewing them. You know, it would be a case of, it would come up to renewal time and I'd see the domain and I'd be like, that is a good domain though. That is a good domain. I don't really want to let that expire. Should probably just, you know, pay the 11 quid or whatever it was and renew it. But I have become a bit more ruthless with that and I don't do it anymore. I just let them expire. So I'm actually looking pretty good as of this moment on my disgrace rating, but I know most of you are absolute disgraces, so you can probably relate to this. Um, so here's what we need to do, all right? Here's what we need to do. When we have this urge to buy a domain, let's just stop, pause, think, and go, all right, I've already got 84 domains that I'm paying for each year, and I've got one live website. So I'm pretty disgraceful. So why don't I actually take one of my existing ideas and build it, hey? That's just a thought. Why don't I do that? And we need to have these conversations with ourselves because we need to establish what we actually want to get out of our life without getting too deep. It does come back down to that. What do we want to get out of life? Because if you're just going to keep on flitting and starting new things and never finishing them, you're going to really struggle to actually make any money from these ideas because they're never going to be established. They're never actually going to come into reality. They're only ever going to stay ideas. Now, you can look at this in a positive way because the fact that you've got so many domains, it shows that you're actually quite creative and you've got the ideas. I don't know if it shows you're creative, but it shows that you've got ideas. A lot of people are short of ideas. So the fact that you've got ideas is a positive thing. And it's just turning those ideas into real things, real websites, real businesses. That is the struggle. But I have a solution for you. And it's something that I have spoken about previously. And it's something that I have personally found very helpful and it's helped me to actually not be so much of an absolute mess. And that is this whole idea of going live on day one. So the first day you have the idea, the first time the idea pops into your head, you make that website live or you make that web app live on that day. 
on that day, on the same day you have the idea. Now, this sounds unrealistic to a lot of people, but it doesn't have to be. I'm not saying you get a fully complete web app live and it's got every feature that you want and it's doing everything you want. I'm not saying that at all. That is probably unrealistic, unless it's a very simple idea, in which case it's not. But if you live by the live on day one philosophy, a bit lame, but if you live by that, which I try to, you should be getting some sort of version live on the first day. And it's actually really easy to do that. And like I say, this is something I've spoken about before, but it's so important. So it's something I'm gonna be talking about a lot coming up. So hopefully you don't get sick of it, but you need to be getting something live, right? So even if it's just a homepage with a little bit of information about what you're offering, get it live, get it on a live server it's not difficult to get something basic up there. And what that actually does, while you might be thinking, well, what's the point in having a really basic version that doesn't actually do anything up there? What it does is it helps clear your mind and declutter your mind and it helps you realize what is actually important, what content you need on your website, what features you need on your web app to get it going as quick as possible. And it stops you tweaking the most stupid, pointless, little, tiny design aspects of your website. It stops you worrying about the font. It stops you worrying about changing the logo. It stops you worrying about the color scheme. It's not important. It's so not important, especially at the beginning. Down the line, it may become more important, but when you're getting started, it's not important in the slightest. Even the name of your website isn't that important. Like we've got all these domains that we're like thinking, oh, that's a great domain. It's not that important, trust me. You're overthinking the importance of branding and all that stuff, not important in the beginning. So you wanna just get yourself the most basic version live, just minimal. Like even if it's just a hero element and a little tiny block of text, get it live because you're then gonna know, okay, the next thing I need is I actually need more information, so you're gonna get some more text. And what you can gradually do is keep on adding and adding and adding until you've actually eventually got something that is worthwhile. Now, that's kind of relevant if you talk about a simple website, so depending on what you're doing. But if you're doing a web app, it is a little bit different. So you might wanna get live just the most basic version that allows you to get users to sign up and then you can send them a message saying, look, I'm building this out, thank you for signing up, um, I will notify you when there is more to show you or when there are features available. What you're actually doing, instead of building the entire web app on your local machine and then uploading it when it's ready, you're building an email list and you're making a situation where you can get signups on the first day of actually having this functioning web app because you've got all these emails, you know they're interested, and you can just send them an email saying, hey, look, you signed up, uh, I said to you that I'd let you know when it's ready, and now I'm letting you know that there's something you can look at. And you're gonna get more traction that way. If you don't do this, what you're doing is you're delaying your progress. So if you can get that basic version up, you're giving yourself a head start. Now, as I know you are aware, there's no guarantee that it's gonna be a success. And the chances are it's not gonna be a success, but you're giving yourself the best chance possible and you're saving yourself time. So there's a chance you're gonna to have to put out loads of websites before you find something that actually takes off. But what you can do by putting out multiple projects is you can gather those emails, get the permission of your users that you can contact them for marketing purposes. And guess what? You can send emails to these contacts that you've acquired through all of these projects and something might resonate with them with a different project and they might sign up. So it's worth going live as soon as possible just to capture the emails. On that note, I wanna quickly talk to you about the hosting provider I use. I use Cloudways for pretty much all of my websites, 
not all of them, but pretty much all of my websites. And they have been amazing. I was thinking about this earlier. It's the best hosting provider I've ever had. They have literally helped me out so many times. If I ever have any little problem, I had a problem with GitHub, linking GitHub, and I contacted their support through the live chat. And it was me just being a pleb, but they didn't actually go, Look, mate, you're being a pleb. They actually <laughs> talked me through exactly what I needed to do. Uh, and did what they needed to do on their end to link up my GitHub repository and get me live, um, get me deployed through GitHub. And it was actually amazing. Um, and I've been with them for years now. I don't know exactly when, um, but it's been a number of years. I've got loads of websites hosted with them. Uh, they're absolutely amazing. And at the moment, if you sign up before Halloween, that's the 31st of October, Use the code TREAT24. I'll put a link in the description. It will automatically apply that code for you if you click that link. You will get 30% off for three months. So that is quite a good deal to get you started. Also, if you wanna just try it out, you don't actually have to put in a credit card or debit card or anything. You can just try it out for free. I think they give you maybe a few days where you can just access it completely free, no obligation. And then if you don't want it, you can just you know, say, nah, no thanks. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, you can do that as well. But I really do recommend them. So yeah, give them a go if you are looking for a new hosting provider. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Do all that YouTube stuff. Let me know your disgrace rating. Let me know about the biting tongue thing. Is that weird? Have you done it? It's interesting. It's interesting. Anyway, see you next time the end.